if this is your first time uh, coming to Ransburg Scout Reservation, welcome. Uh, we are excited to have you and your unit. If you are a returning uh, unit, welcome back, welcome home, and we cannot wait to have you on the banks of Lake Monroe in what will be just a few. Uh, so the intention of this meeting is to give you kind of a preview of some changes, some updates, some things we're really excited about, but also to give you a kind of an introduction of ways to help your unit be most successful between now and when they arrive at camp. Um, I'm going to introduce the best leadership team in the Boy Scouts of America, um, starting off with uh, one of our assistant camp directors, Ryan Kelleher, another assistant camp director, Justin Scott, Another assistant camp director, Ian Lyons, and our esteemed assistant program director, Eric Alt. Uh, we have several other members of our team, but a lot of them are actually at National Camping School right now getting trained to ensure that this summer is even better than possible. A um, few little things. Um, if you have a question, there is a Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. If you put that in there, Ryan and some other people will be answering that throughout the meeting here. Um, and some of them we'll get to at the very end. So if you'll hold all questions and put it into that Q&A um, tab at the bottom, or just hold on to it until the very end, we'll have an open format for question and answers. All right. Um, so. Without further ado, let's get started. Um, so again, uh, what's new for this summer? Um, something that I'm super jazzed and excited about is our all-inclusive programming. That is for youth and adults. Uh, there are no longer any merit badge fees. Uh, if you are taking basketry merit badge, your scout does not have to purchase the basket in the trading post. We will have all of that available in uh, the handicraft area, but as well for like shooting sports, all those merit badges, or if you want to take uh, water sports or anything at the ranch, there are no program feeds. It is all inclusive to ensure that every scout is able to take whatever they want and have their adventure at camp be spectacular and not have to worry about any additional charges or fees. So that's something we're super excited about. Um, as well as we have heard you, we have been listening to you over the years, and we have completely reimagined our evening and open programming updates and schedules. I'm going to let Eric talk about that in a moment, as well as some additional new merit badges on top of the plethora of other merit badges that we have always offered at camp. So those are just a few things. And I'm going to kick it off to our program director, assistant program director, apologize, Mr. Eric Alt. Give it up for Eric, everybody. Uh, good morning, everyone. I appreciate you coming out today. Um, if we could get the next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, this year's camp theme is flight. So we've designed a pretty cool Top Gun inspired patch uh, to go along with that theme. Uh, should be a good time. We've got some fun ideas in the works. Uh, our big things we wanted to work on this year were taking feedback from previous years and implementing them in our programming schedule. So. Uh, as always, we strive to add new programs when possible, and we've had some interest in the theater and chess merit badges. So in addition to our previous offerings, we've added those two, uh, which should be really great, especially considering we now have that human-sized chessboard at camp. I'm sure that will be used in some way. Uh, as Chris mentioned, expanded merit badge opportunities, removing the program fee, four different programs and just making it all inclusive, I think simplifies the process a lot, keeps things really streamlined. You don't have to worry about a kid, did you go and get your basket? Did you get a ticket for shot, uh, shotgun shooting? They just have to show up. It should be very simple in that way. Uh, the biggest thing we're excited about is definitely the way we've re revamped evening and open program. 
So uh, some of the feedback we heard previously was uh, with the evening program, it's kind of hard to know what's going on where. Uh, we decided to kind of centralize the evening program based off the day of the week. So on any given day, for instance, Monday, we've kind of termed main camp Monday. All the open program offerings in camp will be in the main camp area on that day. That way, it's easy to know where your scouts should be if they're in an open program. Uh, that goes through the week. Uh, Tuesday is Adventure uh, Tuesday. So it's everything on Adventure Ridge is open. Uh, Wednesday, of course, remains Troop Night. And then Thursday, we have a uh, beach party Thursday. So everything will be down at the waterfront as well. That doesn't mean it's just those open activities for aquatics, but other things just all base down at aquatics, so it's a centralized location. If you want to have some adult leaders down there keeping tabs on your scouts, you don't have to have 10 adult leaders scattered around camp trying to keep track of each scout. They should be in that area. And again, the goal was simplifying and clear as far as where things are happening and when. Uh, the thing that I'm personally most excited about because in my years working at camp, the number one uh, question I got was, I'd have a scout come up to me and say, I'd like to go to open shooting. Uh, when is that? That's between 3.30 and 5. And then you just see them get that look of disappointment on their face because they have a merit badge in that time. So one of the things we wanted to do was make new opportunities to experience open program, even if they have a full schedule. And the way we did that was, uh, one day a week, each program area that offers a really desirable open program, shooting sports, aquatics, the ranch, they will offer evening open program. So, for instance, on our current schedule, we show that on, uh, Tuesday, on Tuesday nights, uh, there will be evening trail rides, and that will be after dinner in such a way that regardless of a scout's schedule, they should be able to go on that trail ride if they would like. Uh, the idea being, we're still offering the other open program hours, but this opportunity for someone who's maybe booked in that time and all they've wanted to do all week is ride a horse. We're gonna make it happen. Uh, so overall, I'm personally really excited about that because I can't tell you how many times I fielded that question in my years at camp. Uh, so I think if you have one takeaway from this slide, it's that we're trying to make things more streamlined for you as leaders and more available for your scouts to keep things fun, because that's what camp's all about. Uh, with that, I would like to pass it along to Justin Scott, who's going to talk to us about uh, things you need to do to prepare for camp. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, Justin Scott, um, I'm excited to be back at Randsburg again for uh, summer number 25. Uh, so that's that's been an exciting journey uh, to be a part of camp for all of these years. Um, and I'm uh, just going to talk a little bit about uh, some things you can do to prepare for camp. Um, most likely you have been receiving the pre-camp uh, emails and messages um, from either the council or uh, starting here in May, they'll start coming from our camp commissioner, uh, which is Alex Buxton, um, who I'm sure you will all have an opportunity to meet uh, at camp this summer. Um, he's got a lot of great ideas and plans and play for your experience while you're at camp. Um, and speaking of experience, there's our experience guide, which you have all, you should have all had access to already. Um, that has all of the different things that are happening at camp for the youth, for the adults, um, and just kind of in general, kind of the Q&A and, and things that you, you need to, to best prepare your time at camp. Um, if you don't have access to that, you can also visit our website and, and gain that um, guide from the website as well. Um, there's a lot of different things that are good to uh, tackle before you get to camp, um, and it all kind of depends on uh, what your scouts are doing at camp. Swim tests, for example, is something that you can accomplish before you come to camp. Uh, there's a form and directions on how to do that, and you would bring that form with you to camp and, and submit it to be able to, to, 
to kind of get past that point. Otherwise, you would do swim tests when you come to camp. Uh, any scouts who are doing ATV or the PWC uh, programs, those obviously will have some waivers and some things that need to be taken care of uh, before you come to camp. And if you get all of that organized with your scouts who are taking those courses, it's going to be a lot smoother and easier for them um, when they're at camp. Um, and then the other big one, um, obviously, we want camp to be a safe place. And just like every scouting function and every scouting thing, um, we need to ensure that all adults uh, who are with us at camp this summer have um, accomplished uh, youth protection training. Um, so as the, the either the camp coordinators or the scout masters of your unit, um, it is going to be imperative and vital to ensure that all adults who are coming to camp are registered and have uh, youth protection training. Um, we've got a few other kind of changes this year with our health forms and um, some check-in process. And I'm going to have Ian Lyons, who is one of our other assistant camp directors and a former camp commissioner, uh, explain some of those changes that are, are happening this year as well. So, Ian Lyons. Thank you, Justin. Um, so, health forms are a little uh, different this year um, from how we've done it in the past at Randsburg. Um, this year, we are asking that you do not send your health forms in ahead of time, whether that's by mail or by email. Um, we are not um, looking at health forms ahead of time. Uh, instead, we will be looking at health forms upon your arrival at camp. We need everyone um, who is attending summer camp to bring a health form, parts A, B, and C, um, with you to camp. The health form you bring needs to be a copy. Um, this year, we will start collecting um, everybody's health forms, uh, just as we have in the past, but you will not be receiving them back at the end of the week. Um, this is due to an Indiana state law um, requiring us to retain the health forms for two years. So make sure you bring a copy of your health form, not the original. Um, as you will not be getting them back at the end of the week. Um, also, um, when you arrive to camp, uh, check-in will begin at 1 p.m. at STEM, just as it has in the past. Um, but you are able to arrive at camp beginning at 10.30 a.m. Um, that's a little later than it was in the past, but 10.30 a.m. still plenty early enough to get down to your camp. Um, start getting set up that way you afternoon. Um, we ask that you check in at STEMS too. Um, if that, if for some reason you are going to be at STEM, just uh, let your camp, let the camp commissioner, Alex Buxton know. Um, there'll be an opportunity for that when he sends you an email um, three weeks prior to your arrival. Um, that is about all. I'm hey, real, real quick. Anybody um, out there in the audience like our new check-in process last summer? I hope if you have been at camp before, you felt that we we hyper focused on making that more streamlined for all of you in main camp and make it as efficient as possible. Um, so thank you all for your feedback in the past. Uh, I will say that was we are continuing to build efficiency in that process so that your first experience when you get to camp with your scouts is, is efficient uh, and go do all the fun stuff. So uh, Justin and our camp commissioner have been focusing on that um, and making changes routinely in that regard. Um, but, and, and again, that's, that's what we're all here for. Uh, sorry, Ian, just, Want to no plug in that you guys have been working hard on and making that happen over the last year and a half. Yes, thank you, Chris. Um, moving on, um, I think we're going to uh, talk a little bit about um, some question and answers. And if you have questions, so you can contact. Pass that over to Ryan Kelleher. All right. Good. Uh, good that morning, everybody. A um, few questions that I'm going to go ahead and answer, and I'm. I'm kind of turning to my right here because I have my questions pulled up on the screen. Um, this is what, now would be the time to go ahead and submit any questions that you have to the Q&A session. Um, and what I will do is I will um, answer some of these directly and I will pass a few of them on to some of the members of our team here uh, to go ahead and answer as well. 
Uh, so the first question um, is a set of questions regarding provisionals that I'm going to answer. Um, and the question was, can a scout come as a provisional and still sign up for merit badges? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Uh, we want to make sure that every scout who wants to come to camp uh, can come to camp, even if they can't attend the particular week with their troop, um, or if they're, or th their troop's not coming to camp, or there's some situation where they can't make it that particular week. Um, so yes, they absolutely can. The process for that um, is, first of all, that scout um, and or that scout's parents, uh, more realistically, need to sign up uh, for camp, uh, just like your troop would do um, in the system. Uh, so they would go into the reservation system, uh, they would sign up, and it's important that their information is under their year-round troop. So if they're part of Troop uh, 100, they need to sign up uh, with Troop 100. Um, so they would go and do that. And then we, um, and Alex Buxton, our camp commissioner, would match them up with your troop um, for their week here at camp. Um, and you might actually be asked as a Scoutmaster or Committee Chair uh, camp contact uh, to host a provisional scout uh, because we are looking for homes for some of these scouts for their week at camp. Um, and then they can still sign up for merit badges. Uh, merit badges open back in April, so they're live right now, so they can sign up when they first sign up for camp. Um, and uh, the experience will be um, hopefully similar, um, and uh, they'll have a great week at, uh, at camp. Um, next question, I'm going to pass over to uh, Ian. Um, there are two questions here. So first one, Ian, is, uh, is it best to arrive at camp before 1 p.m.? So I'll let you answer that question first here. All right. Um, so it is recommended that you arrive to camp before 1 p.m. Um, we would like for you to start checking in at 1 p.m. at the STEM shelter. Um, that way we can get you through everything um, and you'll still have time um, to kind of get settled before the evening activities and dinner. Um, so it is recommended that you arrive anytime between the 1030 and really noon, one o'clock, um, you can go down to your campsite, start setting up, and then meet up at the STEM shelter at 1 p.m. Um, at the STEM shelter, we just require the SPL and Scoutmaster. Um, the rest of your troop should be nearby up in main camp um, after the STEM shelter check-in process. Uh, the entire troop is needed for the rest of the check-in process. And that's that's something new we started last year is kind of this early arrival time. Um, so I know some units have sent down like their troop trailer or whatever ahead of time. All of that's possible for you. The whole intention is there will be staff members to help with uh, giving you access to your campsite starting at 1030 um, to help with that uh, arrival process with with your unit and the other units coming to camp. Um, if you want any like um, tips or tricks with that or any suggestions, again, you will be receiving an email three weeks before your unit comes to camp from our camp commissioner. And that person, Alex Buxton, again, um, will be able to field those questions and work with you one-on-one -on -one and directly to help support what's best for, for your unit. And that's that's what we're all here to help support as well, for sure. Perfect. Uh, thank you, uh, Ian and Chris, uh, on that question. Uh, next question is, what are the options for Wednesday evening dinner? Uh, which is a great question. So Wednesday for dinner uh, is our troop night, uh, which means we do not have uh, scheduled dinner in the dining hall that evening. Um, and troops do a number of different things, and there are a number of different options that are available to you. Uh, so option one would be ordering pizza. Um, you will get a uh, pizza order form with your check-in packet when you arrive at camp on Sunday. And we uh, contract with a local vendor for ordering pizza, and it's your typical pizza uh, with toppings. You can get various toppings and that sort of thing um, at a pretty typical, slightly discounted price point than you might get if you order at home. Um, so that's one option, and then there are a number of troops that do that. There are also a number of troops that cook in their campsite. So um, you know they might cook spaghetti or any number of things um, in their campsite, and we can help um, to provide uh, some additional resources for that, whether it's be you know checking out Dutch ovens, checking out stoves. We have all of that available um, in our quartermaster that we can help you with if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, there are a few troops that like to go into town uh, that evening. So they'll carpool into town and go to a local restaurant, a local pizza place, um, a local um, uh, restaurant, you know, buffet, that sort of thing. Um, so that's also an option. Um, and then some, some troops have 
uh, you know, a family bring in uh, dinner that evening that might be coming down. So uh, might stop by Subway or, or any number of places. So those are, those are kind of our options for, uh, for dinner on Wednesday. Uh, next question I'm going to answer um, from Joe is, is there a basic daily schedule uh, to look at? And the answer to that is yes, there are a few schedules, and I want to outline what those are uh, right now for you. So first of all, we have our activity schedule. And the activity schedule, and, and let me preface all of this, these are all available in the document section on our website. We will be posting the evening program schedule that I'm going to talk about here in a moment uh, here shortly. But we have the activity schedule, which is your, your daily uh, programmatic schedule, and that's what um, everybody has been using uh, throughout the course of the year to plan uh, their uh, mirror badge signups and activity signups. So that's probably what you're familiar familiar with already. In addition to that, we have an adult leader training schedule that's in the document section on the website, already updated for 2023. So that includes all of the trainings and other activities for uh, just adults. Um, so that's on our on our website as well. And then we also have the evening program schedule. An open activity schedule. Uh, and those are two separate documents. The evening program schedule outlines everything that's happening in the evening. Um, and then the open program schedule um, outlines all of the open programs to have it kind of in one, um, one place. You'll also get all of those printed out when you arrive on Sunday in your check-in packet. And then those, those will also be all uh, posted in your campsite as well. Um, and then finally, we have an hour-by-hour hour schedule, um, which is just kind of a rundown of everything that happens during the day. Um, as well. So lots of different schedules and, and the intent is not to create confusion, but rather the opposite and to, uh, to allow you to use whatever schedule you're looking for rather than have it on one document. So um, those are all available. So that's a great, uh, great question, Joe. Um, question from uh, Erica. You know, if some scouts in the troop have swim tests done in advance and others don't, is that okay? Absolutely. And that's pretty common. Um, and our new check-in process that we started last year allows for that um, in a little bit easier manner. Um, so as part of the check-in process, um, the scouts and or leaders who have not completed a pre-camp swim check will go down to the aquatics area um, and get that uh, taken care of. So they'll go through the, the swim check down there. And then anybody else that has already had that taken care of, they can head back to the campsite, finish the camp tour, and do the rest of that process. Uh, but they do not have to go down to the aquatics area. So that's a great question. And so if it's a mix of both, that is totally um, fine. A uh, question from Mark. Uh, interested in adult aquatic supervision. Is that something offered? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's no pre-registration required for any of the adult leader trainings. You know, so if you're planning your week at camp, um, in particular your adults week at camp, I would encourage everyone to take a look at that adult leader training schedule. Um, it's a camp is a great opportunity for you um, as a scoutmaster, committee chair, uh, camp contact to get any adult leaders that are new to your troops registered and trained um, in uh, whatever position they're going to be in, plus some additional trainings. I mean, they can get fully trained while they're down here. Um, and that includes some of those other specialty trainings um, as well. Uh, okay. Uh, Jonathan says, during check-in, is the whole troop or just the camp coordinators and couple of leaders? Um, great question. So regarding check-in, um, Ian talked a little bit about the timing for that. Um, at STEM, the Scoutmaster and SPL uh, will start the check-in process at STEM. And then the whole troop will be needed after that first step. So check-in is a multi-step process, starting with uh, STEM, that's the initial check-in, then you move over to the medical rechecks portion, which is in the, the tent outside the dining hall, um, and then a couple other steps from there. The whole troop will be needed uh, for the rest of those steps. That's a great question as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, a question about amenities at each campsite. Um, Justin, I'm going to pass it over to you, if that works, to answer the amenities question at each campsite. Uh, sure. Uh, so each of the campsites uh, have the canvas tents on platforms, and uh, each campsite is also equipped with a shelter. Um, that shelter draw has a, a battery pack that also draws uh, some electricity from the uh, solar uh yeah, solar panels, sorry. So solar panels on top of uh, the shelter. Um, so uh, it provides light for the shelter. Also, there are a few outlets within that shelter as well um, that is in the campsite that can be used to uh, plug in, recharge anything, that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, there would be picnic tables within the campsite as well, uh, typically in that shelter area. Each campsite is also equipped with a uh, fire ring um, that can be used for campfires or evening fires or that kind of thing. Um, 
And I think that kind of highlights the main amenities within that campsite. Um, all of the campsites are in with a, a pretty good distance. Oh, each ridge area does have a latrine um, that um, is shared by a few campsites on that ridge. Um, so there's the latrine there, but all of the campsites are also um, in, in fairly decent walking distance for, uh, to um, an actual facility uh, with showers and, uh, and, and restrooms as well. And each of our restroom facilities are all individual restroom facilities and individual shower facilities. Perfect, thank you, Justin. Um, question about food allergies, dietary restrictions. So I wanna go over that real briefly. Um, when Alex, our camp commissioner, sends out his three-week email, so you'll receive that email three weeks before your arrival at camp, there will be a link to a dietary restriction form um, that is put together by our food service vendor, uh, and you will fill that out for each scout. That form is also available right now if you would like to get a head start on that. Um, on our website, you can find it um, in the dining hall section of the website or in the documents slash download section. Um, and that would be the best way to notify us about those allergies. It's encouraged that um, the parent of that scout fill out that form. That way uh, we have as much information as possible about that particular uh, food restriction or, or dietary allergy. Um, and then what will happen after you fill out that form um, is that if it is a uh, allergy, uh, the dietitian with our food service vendor will contact that parent. So that's why it's helpful to have the parent uh, contact information in that form, which is one of the fields, um, and, and just have a conversation with that parent to make sure that we fully understand uh, that dietary restriction and we're accommodating that scout as, as best as possible. If it's a common allergy, such as a peanut allergy, the dietitian won't contact the parent. Uh, we are peanut and tree nut free in the dining hall, um, which is helpful. Um, okay, um, going down the list here. Great. Um, let's see here. So once we got past the first day of merit badge times, it's not appear that we got signed up for program. Uh, so if you want to change merit badges, so this is a great question about changing merit badges um, throughout uh, between now and when you arrive at camp, you have a couple options. You can go on to the registration site to the same location where you registered for merit badges. Um, and you can go ahead and change those now. So if you have a scout that has changed their preferences on what merit badges they would like to take, um, you can go ahead and take care of that now um, if you would like. Um, the other option is when you arrive at camp on Sunday evening, we will have a merit badge add drop slash change session. And that will be after dinner. Typically, we do that in the picnic area, which is between the camp office and the health lodge. All of our program areas will be represented at that. Uh, so if you have a scout that uh, maybe just signed up for camp, that would be a great opportunity to take care of those merit badges. Uh, or if it, you have a scout that wants to change something, and um, that would be a good opportunity as well. Um, they can speak directly with uh, the area director of that, that, that camp area um, and, and the program staff as well. So that would be a good opportunity to uh, change those. Great. Good question there, Jim. Okay. Uh, moving on down the list here. Uh, so if we choose to cook in our campsite on Wednesday, is there refrigeration available to help store food until Wednesday? Yes, uh, Holly, we can absolutely help you with that. Um, we have stored um, some food in the past in um, our dining hall freezer refrigerator for you. Um, so if that's a need, uh, just let us know and we can help take care of that for you. Um, the best opportunity to do that would be when you arrive on Sunday or Monday morning, uh, talk with uh, Alex, our camp commissioner, and he can help facilitate that for you, whether it is you know picking that food up from the parking lot uh, when a parent or leader drops that off or what have you, we can we can definitely take care of that. That's not a not a problem. Great question. Um Great question. So Carl asked the question. There are a couple of questions about the health forms here and, and what's going to happen with those. Uh, where do we store those? Where do they go after the course of summer? Uh, that's a great question, valid question. So I'm just going to go ahead and answer that for Carl here. Um, and the question was, you know, we have some parents that are um, concerned, you know, what's happening to those? Are they going to be locked up? Um, all of that sort of thing. And yes, they will be. So we currently have a retention policy that's required by state law for all of our, uh, anything we treat in the health lodge. So let's say you have a scout that goes into the health lodge and, and cut their finger. We have paperwork that we have to fill out for that, um, including a treatment record and that sort of thing, similar to a doctor's office, right? You go to the doctor's office or the hospital, you know, the, the personnel there fill out their, their forms, their patient record, all that sort of thing. We do the same thing. Um, we've been required to keep those for seven years. Um, um, until the age of majority, I think, um, plus seven years. Um, so all of those documents are stored in a locked facility up in Indianapolis. Um, so we send those up at the end of the summer. 
So I believe the, the council's plan at the moment is to do the same thing with these health forms. So to keep them locked um, in that same, um, same mechanism of, of storing those documents for two years and then they'll be disposed of after that. Um, and Carl, I'm making sure I'm answering all of your question here. So I'm reading through it. Good question. Will any of this be digitized, scanned? Uh, no, they are not. So they're going to be uh, kept via paper, um, just like our health records currently are. So all of our health records, the existing ones are all, all paper, uh, which is why um, we ask for you all to bring copies of these so that uh, we can have those paper copies and they'll be locked up um, after that. That's a good question. And they are not being submitted. Another question here was that they are not being submitted to anybody. Um, they, are, they are kept and then uh, they'll be disposed of after those two years. Good question. Okay. Moving on down the list here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, question, I'm going to toss this over to Ian about CPAP machines and how we help to facilitate those uh, here in camp. Yes, um, we do have CPAP um, batteries um, available for your use. Um, we require, uh, or we will, we charge a $35 fee um, for your use of the battery for the week. Um, you can email our camp commissioner, Alex Buxton, ahead of time if anyone in your unit will be using a battery. We do have a limited supply of batteries. Um, so that is a good idea to email Alex ahead of time. Um, other, and then when you arrive at camp, you can come to the office, pay the $35 fee, and then in the office, they will give you a battery with a, that is charged. And then um, after each night, you can bring it back up to the office and have it charged during the day. So. Perfect. Thank, thank you, Ian. A um, couple more questions here on the health form front. Thank you. All right. Um, so, uh, Scout takes meds. Uh, will those be kept in the health lodge? Uh, he takes afternoon medication, um, et cetera. Um, so, we can keep medications in the health lodge if they're refrigerated, and that's our typical uh, process. So, if it's a refrigerated medication, we have a refrigerator that keeps uh, that is locked in the health okay. lodge. Um, so that would be uh, the process for that. Um, uh, during yeah. check-in. Um, um, it keeps being different. I'm like the fourth person. Justin talked for a while. He and I and he and talked for a while. He's the third camp director. Perfect. Um, so, um, yes, you will, upon check-in, uh, you will receive a lockbox. Um, that, so that's part of that process. You'll receive a lockbox um, and a lock, um, and then a medication log. Um, so we um, allow you as the unit to administer medications to scouts. Uh, you know your scouts best, um, better than our health officers do. Um, so you'll get a lockbox, a camp lock, um, and then you'll keep that in your campsite. And most troops um, assign an adult uh, to take care of that throughout the course of the year. Uh, we do ask that all that is logged on, on our logs, um, and those medications are administered at the troop level. If you have anything that is refrigerated or needs refrigerated, um, we can take care of that in the health lodge. That's a great, uh, great question. Very good. Um, Another question on health forms, should the scout master hold on to medical forms or should each scout have their own? Um, each scout, uh, as part of the check-in process, uh, each scout sits down with a staff member, and this is during medical rechecks, and is asked kind of a, a list of questions, you know, have they been sick recently, they go over allergies and all that sort of thing as part of the medical check process. So each scout will need uh, their own as part of that check-in process. If I were the scout master, I would hold on to those until we arrive at camp, uh, and I would pass them out one minute before we head through the medical recheck process. Uh, but you can kind of administer that how you would like within your troop uh, setting, but that's, that's how I would do that. That's a good question, Ron. Um, okay, another question on the program front here. Um, now I'm gonna pass over to Eric. Eric, will you hit on and just real briefly discuss um, the, um, oops, actually, I think Eric is gone. So I'm going to answer this question for Eric. So uh, Matt asked about Rainsburg Rendezvous. Yahoo is not on the evening program schedule. Uh, that is correct. Um, so we have um, temporarily retired that, Matt, uh, in favor of some other programming, some other opening programming. So we're rotating that out this year um, and uh, focusing on some other things uh, this particular year. There will still be branding available. So if you want to brand some items, uh, you can definitely do that. So that's a great question. Uh, 
Um, Chris, I'm going to pass over to you Tim's question about uh, youth protection training and registration um, and, and the requirements on that front. Very good. So uh, you will notice that youth protection training is not available at camp. It is not on the adult leader training schedule because uh, it is expected and I expect every adult leader who is coming to camp to have their current youth protection training done or they get to camp. Um, and that is a clear across the board, new national policy and, and a good one. The, you know, the, 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 the team of our, our members is, is, is paramount at all times. So um, you are required and every adult leader coming to camp is required to have that done ahead of time. If you're in a parent or another adult leader uh, dropping kids off on um, Sunday or on Saturday, that's different. Um, if you are a parent coming to visit Wednesday evening for troop night, that's different. If you are staying at camp as an adult, which is 18 and over, you are required to have current youth protection training completed before you arrive. Just want to be very, very clear on, on, on that policy. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Um, question from Mike. Uh, Mike, first of all, welcome. Glad uh, you're you're here at camp. You mentioned the first time at Ransburg. Uh, his question was, what's the process for dropping trailers at the campsites and then picking them up at the end of the week? Uh, so when you arrive, you will be able to take your trailer down to your campsite. So let's say you arrive at 1030 a.m. on Sunday. You'll be able to drive that. You'll, you'll meet a staff member at the gate. They'll hand you some information, and then you can drive that straight down to your campsite and drop it off um, with your truck or what have you. If your troop does not have a trailer, um, because that does happen, and you know, there are plenty of troops that do not have trailers, um, you can do the same thing in a pickup truck or a van or however you would like to do that, um, consolidate that gear and, and drive it on down there and drop it off. Uh, we do ask that any motorized vehicle, so your, your truck or what have you, uh, make their way back up to the parking lot uh, by dinner, um, if not a little bit earlier than that on Sunday, um, and then remains there throughout the course of the week. Um, and then at the end of the week on Saturday morning, um, before breakfast even, you can head down to your campsite, uh, lock, you know, put your trailer on your truck, um, and then be ready to go to pull that out. Um, and then head out of camp on Saturday morning. So uh, you'll be able to take it down when you get here, uh, right when you get here, and then you will be able to uh, pick it up right when you're ready to leave. And if you have a parent um, or, or another leader that's coming down to do that, um, they can do the same thing. So on Saturday or on Sunday when you arrive, uh, they can head on down there and drop it off. And then when they come to pick it up on Saturday, uh, they can do the same thing. They can just head on straight down, down to your campsite and uh, pick up that trailer. I would add a little plug from our camp ranger, Keith Korn. Uh, if you are not comfortable driving your trailer down to your campsite or are not comfortable picking your trailer back up at the end of the week or the weather is bad or it's raining or it's a little muddy, please know that our camp ranger, Keith, would be more than happy, almost wanting, to drop that trailer off for you himself and pick it up for you himself at the end of the week than having you know any trailers get stuck in the mud or I mean that doesn't happen often but he is there and wanting to help assist you with your trailer if you need that at any time and no shame there for sure sorry Ryan go ahead no, that's a great question. Um, we would rather you let us know and we're more than happy to help you out than, than get stuck and all that sort of thing. So absolutely. Um, let's see here. Uh, a question, a couple of questions about swim checks um, throughout the course of the year. I want to um, answer these kind of collectively here. Um, so the on-site swim check is part of the check-in process. So that kicks off at one o'clock, uh, the, the check-in process. Um, and you will go from the STEM shelter where, where check-in starts. Uh, you will head over to medical rechecks, which is in main camp here. And, and um, there's a process and you'll get a form and, and guidance for this. Um, and then after that, you have a couple options. You can go to the um, one of several different stations. One of those is the aquatics area. Um, and you'll head down there if you have any scouts that do need their swim check at that time. Um, anybody that doesn't need a swim check or has pre-camp swim checks, 
Yeah, you don't have to head down there for that. So that's a great question. Um, if you want to do pre-camp swim checks, how do you do that? Was one of the questions. Uh, if you're a member of the Crossroads of America Council, there are uh, some pre-camp swim checks that have already happened um, throughout the course of the council and um, um, the aquatics committee. If you're in the Crossroads of America Council, usually coordinates that um, and takes care of that. I know several dates have already happened. I believe there might be a date coming up. I saw um, in a council email. Um, so there are some other options for the council. If you're outside of the Crossroads of America Council, I do know that several councils do uh, provide opportunities uh, for that. Um, if you're a troop that just wants to do it on your own, you can absolutely do that. Uh, the form is available on the website, and there are some requirements on that form that you need to meet as far as lifeguard personnel, uh, qualified supervision, training, um, all that sort of thing. So I would encourage you to review that first to make sure that you're meeting those requirements. Um, and then often uh, your council aquatics committee can potentially help in that process if you're looking for a lifeguard uh, or facility um, or something along those uh, those lines. So, um, you know, we have a lot of troops that just uh, arrive to camp and take uh, care of the swim checks here at camp. We try to make it as, as efficient as possible and usually goes pretty quickly. Um, so don't feel like you have to take care of those swim checks at a time. Uh, doing it here on site is absolutely fine and absolutely something you absolutely can do. Uh, but if you want to do it ahead of time, that is uh, that is totally fine as well. Um, and then a question from Stephen. Um, you know, assuming that everybody has the swim check, um, um, will they receive something that's good for the rest of the year? Um, two options there. So option one, you know, if you have a swimming event that's happening in the fall and you want to use the same, same swim check, uh, you can do that. They're good for a year. Um, you can use the form that you used for that. Or if you want to take your buddy tags with you, uh, you can do that as well. I would encourage you at the end of the week to head on down to the aquatics area on Friday um, in the evening and uh, pick up all of those buddy tags. Maybe you have an adult leader go down there and do that. Um, and those could be used uh, for the rest of the year if you'd like. Um, we're more than happy to give you some buddy tags too if you want to take some with you to, to refill out um, after those have been used for a week. Oh, uh, they're definitely okay. heavily, heavily used. So good question there. I would add on to that though. And the Qualified supervision and lifeguard do have the ability to retest any participant um, as they see fit. So, for instance, if somebody was doing really good with their pre camp swim test, but then got to camp and one of the life saving merit badge instructors that uh, works at Randsburg was like, I'm not really sure this person is proficient. Um, and this goes for your your weekend outings as a unit as well. They can be retested. So I just want to say that so people aren't shocked or, or misinformed that um, safety first always, right? I think I think everybody here understands that. So if somebody is is, is struggling as a swimmer, they, they can be retested. It doesn't happen often, but just want to let you know that that's the rationale is to ensure safety for sure. Absolutely. Perfect. And then finally, last question on swim tests here. Do we have to use your swim test form? Um, as long as it is signed, so as long as you're following the same regulations and rules, that's fine. Um, as long as it is signed uh, by the same individual, so the person administering the test, the qualified supervision, and has everybody listed, um, that is fine. Yep, that, that is fine. You don't have to necessarily use uh, ours in that process. Good question. Um, perfect. Chris, I'm going to turn it back over to you um, for wrapping up here. Again, we, we could not be more excited and happy to have each of you and all of the work that you do as volunteers and parents and community members to support not only what I believe to be the best youth program in the world, uh, but also for choosing Randsburg Scout Reservation for your home of, of scouting this summer. Again, if it's your first time, a return time, or just uh, we always come here time, we are so delighted to have you. Um, and most importantly, you're amazing scouts that through a week-long experience become a better version of themselves by learning how to live by the scout oath and the scout law. And that's all that we're here for uh, is to make that happen. So if you have any additional questions or if there's anything we can do to help support you, we are here for you always to help support um, the mission of the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, we will stay on for a little bit to answer any follow-up questions. Uh, this is being taped, so we'll be able to send this out if somebody in your unit uh, really wants to see this to get some additional questions. Um, we will have that available. Um, other than that, have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. And again, thank you. And it's going to be 
an amazing summer at Reinsburg Scott Reservation. So 